welcome back to another episode of Real Driving Test. You're joined by your sarcastic driving instructor today, and we're here at Boring Wood. I mean, Boring Wood. And this is everything that you need to know about Boring Wood. This test, I was in the back and literally covers everything that you need to know here at Boring Wood. So we're leaving the car park. Don't forget to leave a like, follow, all that good stuff. It's free. And the car park's very narrow, so the examiner will tell you at the beginning and the end of the test, just to take your time, nice and gentle when you go out and when you go in. That's what she said. And at the end of the road, we're going to be turning left. Now, if you do turn right, you'll go straight onto the dual carriageway. I believe that dual carriageway is a maximum speed of 50 miles an hour. You don't have to join it straight away. You might see it slightly on the side, on the right-hand side. So just take your time, just get to the edge and wait until it's a safe gap and then join the dual carriageway. So if you go left, this is where we're heading now into the uh, residential area. And nice spacing here. So if you look at the line down the center of the road, So lining up in the center of that black circle on the bonnet of the car. Those are reference points, by the way. Um, you can use them on the side of the bonnet as well for parking. Here we're going to slow down because they're speeding up. That's the best tip I can give for meeting situations. This is a meeting situation. So if the oncoming vehicle, and uh, obviously there isn't enough space for two cars, so if the oncoming vehicle is speeding up, slow down. Be ready to pull over somewhere safe. Leave enough space for us to move away afterwards as well, so don't crowd the area. Give yourself plenty of room. Just enough space for the oncoming vehicle to get past. I'm not sure what exit we're taking here. It looks like the second exit. So if it is, mirrors inside, outside, signal left. Students very good at doing the roundabouts. So we're gonna have plenty of those towards the end of the test as well. If you are here for the results, the results will all come up at the end. Although I was witness to this driving test, so I did know the result, uh, I won't spoil it. So um, stay with us for the journey and we'll all find out together at the end. So here we've been asked to pull over in a convenient place on the left. So the student has left enough room for other vehicles to still continue to use the road. That's very convenient. And looking at that curb line there, the pavement, where the grass ends and the road begins, you can see how that was positioned somewhere towards sort of the left-hand side of the bonnet. That's what we were talking about earlier for reference points. Now, on your real driving test, if you don't know, you will be asked to pull over on the left at least three times. So we're going to look for raised curb. Oh, there's the show me question. Show me how you'd wash the front windscreen. And we're going to look for raised curbs next to trees, lampposts. These are good areas where there's no driveway and there'll be raised curb. That's a convenient place usually. And don't block the road. So make sure that there's space, obviously, for vehicles to pass once we pull over and stop. We must always signal when we pull over to stop on the left. And we must always signal when we pull over. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Try that again when we pull away okay so make sure you always signal right when you pull away there is a maneuver uh i can't remember what was the maneuver on this driving test parking so we practice it just before so if you on the live just before so we were live oncoming vehicle speeding up slow down big red monster um you would have seen us practice the parking. So we did about three, four um, reverse parks. And funnily enough, it actually came up on the real test. There's that curb line again. So you see where the grass ends, you've got that stone there, that's the curb. And looking at this bus behind us here, uh, you can see where it lines up on the bonnet. That would be a reference point. You may have your driving instructors teach you that. Not a lot of people like reference points. So if it's not for you, don't worry about it. Just got to get used to the size of your vehicle. Oncoming vehicle, slowing down, moving away. That's excellent. That gives us space to continue. Uh, 
end of the road. Lines are starting in the center. That means that there'll be giveaway lines. You can see the giveaway sign on the left there, that upside down triangle also painted on the road. Position for turning right. So obviously we're turning right. And we want to check the nearest that bus is stalking us. Uh, we want to, is he flashing his lights at us? What's going on? Um, oh, I know what's going on. Maybe I don't know what's going on. Okay. What was that all about? Why is he flashing his lights? That that bus or coach, they probably can't see what we can see because we're right at the end of the road. That was strange. Not too sure what that was all about. Very good for the student, though. They kind of kept the composure. They didn't seem to rush anything. Now, I've been witness to this on other driving tests where I have sat in the back. Roundabout coming up. Slow down early. The student's excellent doing this. And um, the, say the vehicle behind is beeped. So I think just there we just got a flash from that coach at the, at the junction. And then the students kind of felt like they have to go, I guess. And they rushed the junction and drove out in front of vehicles, you know, when it's not safe to go. And that's actually been the only reason why they failed the driving test. So if someone does beep you on your driving test, or as we've just seen on this situation here, flash the lights... Um, you witness that, just ignore it. Don't panic, stay calm. It's your driving test, it's your big day. You spent all that money, all that time, etc. Okay, um, just take your time. They can't see what we can see. Okay, so just wait until it's safe to walk out into the road. This is something I've really, really worked a lot with um, this student here. And it's a tricky one. We don't know when to go at junctions. So it really helped me. I know for some things like reference points we talked about, and now we're talking about um, walking out in the road. It, it, some people just find it hard to grasp that concept. So if it is difficult, just imagine you're with like a younger person, say around 10, and you're kind of escorting them or telling them when it's safe to cross the road. So when you would, then that's when you would drive out. So I hope that helps. So the walkout rule is generally when you're safe to walk out, you will be safe to drive out. So that helps for every single junction. Uh, it really helped me and this student to pass the driving test. So if you're having tr uh, trouble or find it tricky with the... Uh, knowing when it's safe to go at junctions. Try that. See if that works for you. If it does, put it in the comments down below. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is going to be a very long driving test. The end of this driving test... Oh, it's emergency stop. I was scared to let the postman turn his head. That was funny. Okay, so now we've got to remember to do our all-round observations before we move away. So that means looking over both shoulders, really break the neck, twist, look out the back windows. That's the hard part. This student slams the brake on, by the way. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So as you can see, that is literally the hardest emergency stop you could ever do. Um, and that's slamming the brake down. So if you've got ABS, you're absolutely fine. All cars, all modern cars will come with ABS. Um, so just slamming your foot on the brake pedal is absolutely fine. No mirror check for emergency stop because it's an emergency. We're just going to slam the brake pedal down pretty much. And that's that. Um, the hard part that we talked about is to remember to break your neck, look over both shoulders out the back windows before we drive away after we've done our emergency stop. Okay, so just nice right turns here. Can you see like nice and gentle? Coming to the end of the road, positioning really good. So the student's got good positioning. So we can see if they're turning right by the position. So if they hold that center line, they're turning right. If they're holding those double yellow lines, they're turning left. So it looks like a left turn to me. Oh, got it wrong. Pretty narrow road. Okay, what we've got coming down the road. So we want to look long, and learn apart. Brake lights are on. Nice open road here. Good repositioning. You can go over any of the dotted lines, broken lines, whatever you'd like to call them. As long as it's safe, we're not going to crash. Absolutely fine to cross over these lines. Um, 
Nice, good mirror signal, obviously, again. Look at that position with the reference point. Okay, so now we're going to do our all-round observations. Remember, we're going to do this three times on the test. So the left shoulder in this situation because of the pedestrians, and they're the least dangerous, and all the way around to the right shoulder. I wouldn't worry too much about the doing the six point check, you know, like over the left shoulder one, left mirror two, et cetera, et cetera, right? Just look over your left shoulder, right shoulder and get on with it. The examiners don't want to see us take too long to move away. It's unnecessary. It's wasting time. It's, it could be even more dangerous to a certain level because by the time we've took 30 seconds to look around, Something's come along. So just, you know, using mirrors as a guide, we're gonna do the parking now, obviously, and then do a quick left shoulder, right shoulder, make sure the signal's on, and off we go. Okay, so now we're gonna do our reverse park exercise. The student said, I'm gonna wait for this car behind me to go. That was nice, a good observation from the student. That's the first thing we need to do when we're doing our maneuver. So there's another vehicle here as well, so let's wait for this one as it's quite close. We mustn't move the vehicle unless it's safe. So now we're gonna have another look all the way around to make sure it's safe, which the student does, and we start to maneuver. They've actually started at the right position so that they can just turn straight away, that's good. And then now we're coming to sort of that two, two o'clock angle, 45 degree kind of, depending on the vehicle. And we're just gonna gently edge it back, turning the opposite way now, until we're nice and straight and level with the curb. And check all round again, both left shoulder and right shoulder at the middle of your maneuver, whichever maneuver you're doing. And again, check around your left shoulder and right shoulder at the end of your maneuver, whichever maneuver you're doing. So that's just a general tip for all maneuvers, observations at the start, middle and end. Looks like we're finished up here. So we're just gonna probably put the car in park, handbrake on. It's just a nice way to show the examiner that we're finished, securing the vehicle. The examiner will say, when you're ready, drive on again. And how many times have we pulled over now? I think we've pulled over twice. No, even three times, right? Because I was kind of talking in between one session when he pulled in and pulled out. Mention the reference points before that. You can see the reference point again there. It's nice for parking as well. So uh, just where the grass ends and the road begins, that curb, that actual stone, the gray stone there. Um, use that as a reference point for parking. If you have any cameras, they're obviously very useful. You can use those on your driving test as long as we're doing those observations which you talked about earlier. Right, talking about that. Another set of observations there for the reverse part. You want to reverse back, that's fine. And then another set of observations before we move forwards and drive away. And remember, always signal. Always signal. Had students fail for not signaling. Can you believe it? Do the observations and the examiner fails them for not signaling. I need to stop that nervous laugh. Right, where are we positioning? Come on, Scott, get it right this time. Right, it's a right turn, it's a right turn, it's a right turn, it's a goddamn right, no! <laughs> I got it wrong twice on a row. Okay, the guy's got the go sign up, there we go. And um, nice straight long road, nothing really looking, oh, what well, we got speed limit coming up here? Uh, it's 30, right? No speed bumps, no signs, regular street lights. Oh, we've got a sign here, let's see. Oh, give way and roundabout. Obviously slow down here, look to the right. Uh, students on the independent drive with the sat nav. So sometimes you'll have that on and it will tell you that the roundabouts are there and what direction to go. Sometimes you're not on independent drive. The examiner will say, if there's no directions given, follow the road ahead or better one. Nothing said, follow the road ahead. So you see another roundabout here, nothing said, follow the road ahead. Good stopping here for the car on the right that was signaling. Had an opportunity to go there. Now we've got a Mexican standoff. Who's gonna shoot? Okay, car on the right shot. Let them go, wait until it's clear. Blue car's going straight. Nice speed from the blue car, showing it's gonna go straight. And straight wheels, that's the most important part. Where the wheels are pointing is a guarantee of where the vehicle is gonna go next. Looking at the roundabout, looking at those wheels, looking at those wheels. Hey, nice, good tip. And also the speed. Uh, another tip for the roundabouts are if you're there first, 
generally safe to go okay unless you've got like a missile coming from the right hand side so first come first served and the van's kind of in the road a little right mirror check maybe just kind of clearing that and i'm going to look to the right here uh, it's a bit hard to see so look looking again always double check the right side at the roundabouts and all junctions that's the minimum observations cycle path going into the road there that's safe no giveaway lines or nothing it just like carry on anyways <laughs> another roundabout coming up let's see if i could get it right this time which way are we gonna go which way are we gonna go oh come on give me something here I should remember this actually. Uh, I don't remember. Left, left. We're going left. All right, I've locked it in. <laughs> Doesn't look like the position for left turn. Okay. Oh, finally, I got it right. Okay. So, students not really doing the best job of following the yellow lines on the left and kind of pointing that really helps roundabouts. I highly recommend that when we're joining a roundabout, we point, when we come to the junction to stop, we point our vehicle, point our wheels into the lane or the direction that we need to go when it's safe to make our move and join the junction or move into the roundabout. Um, don't waste any time as well. When you do make that decision to go, go. Some of these roundabouts, they're relentless. The traffic is just non-stop and you get that small opportunity. Apex Corner is a good example. Willow Tree is another good example. So when you go, go, right, position left, we're definitely going straight here, checking to the right, and that lorry's gone, where's the white car going, blocker, could be a safe time to go on our way. That's what we were just talking about as well. Okay. Uh, one thing I will share with you guys for this driving test, the examiner, and we can watch this part together, if you're still here, please, it's free. Smash the like button. Um said they were driving too slow so what do you think guess what put it in the comments down below roundabout oh we got so many roundabouts on this test um especially the big dual carriageway roundabouts at the end it's on the left okay what's this warning triangle saying a little zigzag Apart from that, not much. Slow doesn't mean slow. Slow means hazard. That car's behaving itself. No road markings there, it's terrible. Could be some giveaway lines. If there's no road markings, no one has priority. So just be cautious. Um, another situation where that will come up is when the traffic lights stop working. So you may have a major junction and the traffic lights go out. No one has priority at that point. So proceed with caution. Nice long straight road. Little round um, speed bumps here. Not too bad though. Speed, what do you reckon? Okay, the car behind us is kind of close. It's a 30 road, so, mm, I don't know. The speed bumps, do you wanna go over them at 30? I guess it depends on what kind of car you're in. If you're in a 4x4, definitely. Um, if you're in the Mercedes A-Class, the AMG line, they don't like speed bumps. Are we pulling over? Yep. So the examiner's told us to pull over. Don't worry about the yellow line. The student asked, is the driveways okay? The examiner said, no. So you stopped here on the yellow line because the examiner said that's fine. Look at that reference point again, same every time. And the examiner said, don't stop in front of the driveways effectively, okay? So we do always want to try and leave those driveways open. So if someone comes along to try and use the driveway, we won't be blocking. Nice timing there, just really good. The traffic's passed, obviously done our observations. Signal, remember, always on, and we've pulled off and we've just got going again. The speed, I mean, I was in the back. I can't really see exact speed of the vehicle. I, I knew this road had speed bumps on it, so I was thinking, you know, I don't... When we were going over those bumps, you can see it in the video. I think we're going over them probably about, let's say, 15 miles an hour, which isn't too bad for a speed bump. 
if it's a really big bump. Um, these ones are a little bit smaller. Yeah, maybe we could go a little bit quicker. What do you reckon? 20, 25, try and get 25 maybe on this road. Uh, one of my students, Papa, he's on the channel. You can watch his whole driving mock test series. Um, he got told for one of his driving tests that he was driving too slow in the driving test center, and he actually failed him for 25 on a 30 mile an hour road. The examiner said we wanted 28. So even 25 could be a bit too slow. That's what I'm trying to say. Right, here we go. Nice open road. Okay, car behind, is it catching up with us? A little bit. Speed's picking up though. I think we're good. We're going with the flow of the road. Speed limit again is 30 miles an hour. Remember, there's no signs, regular street lights. So always keep looking for signs. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that was one of my biggest weaknesses. Someone said to me, look for the poles. I said, what? I said, yeah, the signs, they're on the poles. <laughs> Something so simple, yet yeah, my ADHD doesn't compute. But anyways, long story. There's that flag. We're gonna see that flag again soon. Bye bye flag. So now we're going to the chalk carriage ray bit. This is the pit where me and the student were both like telepathically talking to each other, saying, why are we going this way? Because we really wanted to turn right there, right is back to the test centre. So now we're going away from the test centre on a very long road towards these huge dual carriageway roundabouts. So we've completed roughly half of our test now, I would say. So if you have been here for the whole video so far, Make sure you got a cup of tea with you, a couple of biscuits or something like that, because we've got the next half coming up now, and that will be the dual carriageway section with all these big roundabouts that I've been talking about. So stay tuned. Uh, like I said, students very good at the roundabouts. Now, they have always been very good at the roundabouts, and the secret to the roundabouts for everybody is approaching speed. So when we're approaching any junction, especially roundabouts, we want to approach it from like running speed to jogging speed to walking speed. So that when we approach the junction, we're at that sort of, let's just say walking speed for argument's sake. So now we can see, because we're going at a slow speed, we can see easier, we can move our head around and still keep control of the vehicle and then make a decision if it's safe to go. So that is it, literally. And if you're having any trouble with your roundabouts, just do that. Everything else would just flow into place after you get the speed on the approach correct. So listen to your feelings. This is kind of a staggered junction. The student did quite well here. So it's not a complete straight straight. It's a slightly diagonal straight. Uh, good control from the vehicle, uh, from the student. And it's just following the road ahead. So if you're not too sure where you're going, ask your examiner. That's what the student actually did at that junction. Very faint road markings, but they read the road. Um, so what I was saying about feelings. Feelings are a massive part of learning to drive. And feelings are there to keep us safe, right? So I'm not very good at my feelings. But if you are then make sure if you feel like anxious or scared or whatever words you'd like to explain that feeling, that high intensity feeling, that means we're going too fast. Okay, so listen to that feeling, slow the vehicle down, and then that feeling will go away. Once we're feeling all right and safe, that's our speed. As we learn and we get more experience, that speed will gently increase itself you know, we could say that we get bored, so we just go a bit quicker. Obviously not over any speed limits, but you know what I'm trying to say. So when we learn, we go really slow, and then we get bored, oh, we start going quicker, all right? And that's how the progress is. I've had students do it the other way around. It usually doesn't work out too well because it gets really scary really fast. So talking about really fast, we've picked up the speed, haven't we? Look at this, right? So slow doesn't mean slow, slow means hazard. Double solid lines here. That means no overtaking on either side. So our slow is for the hazard, which are uh, the bends. Not really too steep, quite gradual, nice road, single lane. 
condition seems to be decent. Some of these roads can have potholes on them, especially after lots of rain. And if you are driving in rain, that can also make the road markings very difficult to see as well. So try to look long, as far ahead as possible. The student's also good at doing that. And that's the last thing for learning to drive, looking long. So the roundabout here, I'm pretty sure we're going straight, second exit. This is the first one of our dual carriageway roundabouts. I think we're going to have three in total. Look at that speed. See what I'm saying? Now you can see, look, blue van. There's a couple of vehicles behind it. Obviously, there's a... All right, so we're just turning left then. This is the video where I get every single direction wrong. And I was on the test. Anyways, we're both learning. We're learning together. The teacher and the student create the learning. All right, nice speed again. I haven't seen any speed signs yet. He said that earlier, but call back again. I'm not very good at looking at speed signs. Where's the speed signs? Are you in the trees? Has anyone, anyone else seen a speed sign? Can you tell me what the speed limit is, please? I'm still looking. Right, now, another road where you may not get signs repeating themselves, and what I mean by repeating themselves, we should have seen a sign by now, like a few hundred meters, maybe half a kilometer or something like that, max, is national speed limit. So if this road is national speed limit, that means maximum of 60 miles an hour. Here's our second dual carriageway roundabout. I think that's your speed limit sign. So it is. So this, that's the maximum of 60, that road. So the, uh, the, the examiner didn't have any issues with their speed here on the dual carriageway. It was that road earlier with the speed bumps. All right, look at the speed on the approach again. Oh, so comfortable, so safe. Good driving. Oh, turn left again. Okay, so... Mm. We're in the left only lane. Looks like we're going to change to the right. Yes, the examiner did mention that. Here's our third dual carriageway roundabout. Nice speed again. Look at that. Good control. Nice lane discipline, regardless of road markings. The student's also good at exiting. Is this something we worked on, though? So you see that? See that change of direction? Rewind it if you need to. So as we're coming towards that exit, as soon as we see the exit, like you see it on the camera, the student, you'll see they change the direction of the car and they just drive straight towards the exit. That's a good line. We call that like a driving line. So for a roundabout, it's a spiral. And what we do is we do that driving line. We spiral off the roundabout. Start to steer left, if you like. At the exit, before the exit we want. That sounds like Greek, because it did to me. Imagine it like a clock. I said clock. So normally a roundabout will have an exit at 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock. If we're going to 3 o'clock, we're going to start to steer left at 12 o'clock. It's a lot of numbers, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a maths class, sorry. Okay, so we're coming towards, say, the last maybe 10 minutes or so of the driving test. So, remember that flag? We're driving back towards the flag. Once we pass that flag, we're heading back towards the test center, like direct line. So, shouldn't be too much longer. We've done our show me question. We'll do our tell me question at the beginning of the test. So that's always the structure. So the tell me question right at the start as you sort of sit down in the car of the examiner. Sometimes as you're walking towards the vehicle, do the eyesight test as well. And then your show me question will be done while you're on your driving test. Okay, so we're turning right here. Nice position. That's another good thing that the student um, was good at, the right turns, the positioning. This is tricky. This is a crossroads, this is turning right. The car in front was a good example. Look at those road markings, they're very faint. The car in front and the student moved across those road markings and inside the road markings, we call that a box junction. So they moved inside the box, which was really faintly painted in that junction. And that's the correct position for your right turn. And that's where we will wait until there's no oncoming traffic or it's safe to turn right. 
two cars can wait. As a general rule, two cars go in the box. If we're the third car, we're going to stop and wait at the traffic light. We will not move across that solid line and onto the pedestrian crossing because we might end up getting stuck on the pedestrian crossing and that would be a serious driver fault. So general rule for crossroads, two cars go into the middle and the third car will wait at the traffic light stop line. Okay, so we've got our single carriageway. We did our three dual carriageway roundabouts. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a few more on the way back. I'm trying to look for those warning triangles there and speed limits again. So do we have regular street lights? Not really. Oh, we'll see a pole. Okay, there's a few here and there. See, I'm not very good at these speed signs, am I? Um... <laughs> I'm putting my money on 30 miles an hour. 30, please. There's that flag. We're on our way back. Almost done. Yeah. Look at the cars behind. A little bit of a train. This is definitely not a national speed limit road. Not with pavements and housing like this. No chance. So this is a 30 mile an hour road. And it looks like I would say we're doing a good 30 miles an hour. So it looks pretty good here. Warning triangle coming up, just telling us there's a bend in the road. And we've got the side road, sorry, as well. So we had the main black strip, which was the main road and the little tiny uh, tab that we saw on the side of that black strip on the warning triangle being the side road. These are really good for the hazard perception videos on the theory test. So if you do see these, oh, there's a speed sign there. I think it's gone to 40 miles an hour. Keep looking for signs and we're just talking about signs. So if you see any signs on your theory test, use those as a clue. It probably means you're gonna have to click that screen or whatever it is now. So there's another drive, uh, sorry, sign. Oh, no, that's not a speed sign. I'm looking for a speed sign. We definitely had a change of speed there. I think it's gone to 40, but there should be some 40 signs reminding us. No, I see no reminder signs at all. We're not holding up traffic behind, though. Oh, was there a painted speed on the road there as well? I think there might have been. Oh, there was a sign there, wasn't there? I couldn't catch that one in time. Did you guys see that? Um, okay, so <laughs> there's one. Oh, 40. Yeah, it was right. Okay. Um, when you're doing your driving lessons and the student, um, props to dad, golf clap, everybody, golf clap, um, took the time to go and do their own private practice. If you can, or you're just doing lessons, whatever it is, go to your area. That's what they did and practice there. And it really pays off because that's stu this student knew all about that flag because they'd gone there and they'd driven around that area. Okay, coming back to dual carriageway roundabout. Good lane discipline, good speed. Look at the right. Yeah, look at the wheels. Excellent. Oh, cheeky van. All right, I guess there was an opportunity to go and change the speed. 80 miles an hour. Did you see that? It said 80 miles an hour. That can't be right. Turning right, position. Bit more over the line, just a little bit. That's it, lovely. Nice in line with the new road. You see the center line here in the new road? We stop there. So we're not gonna go into this white car. We're gonna go into this lane. So that's position for stopping so that we turn into our side of the road. If you have joined us for this whole journey, it's now been just over half an hour or so. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Borenwood Driving Test Centre. As you can see, not that bad. Go there, practice there. There hasn't been much traffic. It's The roads are kind of free-flowing, which is always nice. Um, we did have national speed limit. That's obviously really important for anywhere. If you're doing a driving test anywhere, Go on those roads, practice those roads. 
those are not easy roads. National speed limit roads are not easy roads. So you could go up to 70 miles an hour if it's a dual carriageway. That means more than one lane. National speed limit sign is the white circle with the black stripe running diagonally through it. Really good line. See, we talked about that earlier. Our test centers here. We're finished now. See the exit. Steer straight towards it. Good with the oncoming traffic. See the slowing down. The students are very confident. They're keeping the speed going. This road's tricky because this road is busy. We just talked about it being quite quiet and free flowing. This road, for some reason, probably because it joins the dual carriageway up there, kind of busy. Lots of parked cars. So just be ready to slow down. Look, there's a person waiting on the right there, but they're not moving. Another learner. So we're going to keep going because they're not moving. All right, we're just going to kind of get through this tight gap here. So less space, less speed. Really good use of speed there from the student. So we'll be turning right now. And this will take us to the road that the driving test center is on. So look, this vehicle in front, good position. See the center line? It's nice and tight to the center line. And then it's in line so that when it turns, it's turning into their side of the road. Good, just like this. Or maybe not. <laughs> I guess because that lorry is there, okay? Now, it's time to find out, did the student pass? Or did the student fail? Drum roll, please. What do you reckon, guys? Pass or fail? Pass or fail? Were they driving too slow? Did they forget to do the observations on the maneuver? Was that emergency stop too hard? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Fair enough. They passed. Congratulations. Well done. You have passed your real driving test. How does that feel? So I always ask that question once the students pass. How does it feel? How do you feel? Oh, mate, the look on their face and that kind of breath, that deep breath, <laughs> that relaxation. And then I'm like, do you feel lighter? 99% of people are like, yeah, I feel so light. It's that lift, isn't it? Just focus on that, guys. If you've got your driving test booked and you are feeling like, you know, things aren't going the way that we would hope they would be going, don't let that stop you. Just make sure that you start to think about when that happens, that you start to think about, you know, having a cheesy selfie with your ex instructor and holding that certificate up, that little blue bit of paper, A5 size reasonably decent quality of paper <laughs> and you know that feeling yeah focus on that let's try and reframe it okay so we're entering the car park as you can see it is very busy here um if you've enjoyed the video like we said at the beginning just take it slow on the beginning slow on the end for all driving tests don't forget to leave that thumbs up and we'll see you on the next real driving test I think these have been quite successful. So please do give me your feedback down below. Um, I've been Scott. It's been an absolute pressure. Pressure? <laughs> and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.